time in the Oregon district. Tell us a little bit about the difference in atmosphere uh, in what you would normally see when you're down there, what you saw yesterday, and then how things are kind of starting today as this new normal kind of gets underway there. Yeah, I, I think the Oregon district is, it, I want to say in the time that I've been here for the last three years, it seems like every year it kind of continues to grow. People are really kind of engaging in their community and kind of coming out of the, the cracks here and really this is a place people come to to relax, to you know meet with friends, socialize. Um, I had talked to one individual yesterday and he was describing the, the pure horror that he experienced. And for a second, he flashed back and said, we were having such a good time. And you could just see in his eyes that, you know, despite all of the horrific stuff that happened here uh, Sunday, early Sunday morning, that he was still reflecting on such a great time. And that is something that people do consistently. I've done it myself. I mean, I've had some great times here with some friends. And uh, yesterday into today, it's, it's been nothing like that. It's been um, a lot of just kind of blank faces and uh, obviously uh, some tears. I, I think I've seen some sort of people that seem pretty stoic and then all of a sudden it just hits them. Uh, and you have to be there to hug and embrace each other. I saw police officers hugging, you know, people that are on the streets that just were overcome with emotion. And you don't see that every day. You do not see people on the streets hugging a police officer who's actively, you know, investigating something or, you know, being on a perimeter. So it's, it's something I've never experienced in my six-ish years of journalism that I've seen a, a regular person on the street walk up to an officer and ask for a hug. Uh, Ethan, I... I, I guess I don't have a question. It's more of I just want you to share an observation with me there. I, I can't help but be struck as you are in, in the back of Ned Peppers and uh, our Kristen Escow is in front of Ned Peppers, and we're going to hear from her in just a minute. But as I see behind you, uh, the sun is up. I, you hear activity. Uh, we saw a stack of shoes behind Ned Peppers yesterday, which, uh, boy, yeah. uh, what, what, the, the thoughts that that conjure up as well. Um, and, and the thought of people returning to normalcy. I, I can't even imagine what normal will be like when Ned Peppers itself opens today. Yeah. I, you're, you hit it out of the park there, John. I, I kind of avoided this area when I, a little after, you know, about an hour or so after I got on scene, because, I mean, like you said, I was one of the first ones here. And from the body bags and the shell casings and the shirts and the shoes, you know, I saw all that kind of on my way to the media staging area, and I didn't come back until probably sunrise to just get a break from everything that was going on over there and to walk down here. I mean, I will never look at this area the same. Uh, an area where I have made memories with my coworkers and my friends, it's never going to be the same for me personally. And I cannot even comprehend or imagine the people that work here that are returning to work uh, and the people that come here probably more than someone like myself. Ethan, is anybody there talking about moving forward? I know some people are going back to work. Uh, as you said, a lot of people live there, maybe going out to their jobs, other places. Have you been able to get any type of feel from them uh, about what this new normal is even like? Yeah, not, not so much yet directly, but I mean, there are people that are rolling in, you know, because uh, there are businesses. The EPA is right over here. There's a union hall right behind us on uh, the camera. Um, I'm hoping to talk to some of these people as they pull in. I think people have been pulling in with their cameras and I, I, they're taking pictures and I, they could be taking pictures of the media. But I have seen two or three people come over to the fence, walk around the building. They've seen the, the, the pictures of the shoes. Um, I, I think as people come to work today, if they weren't here yesterday, uh, they're really going to start to kind of grapple with everything here. And, and as soon as I hear something from these people, uh, I'll be sure to let you know. One thing I, I wanted to ask you, and, and I wanted to do this yesterday as well, you were one of the first people on the scene for us after the tornadoes. Uh, you were out in Beaver Creek, and I remember you talking about people uh, seeming to be in disbelief. How did the reaction there, uh, which was a huge tragedy for the Miami Valley, uh, how did that compare to this tragedy as far as just people's reaction? In a lot of ways, they were... That's a tough question. Uh, kind of the same in that it, it's almost as if someone snapped their fingers and everyone kind of lost maybe a form of identity or sort of where they, what they wanted to do and where they wanted to go. Just people kind of roaming around and sitting in shock. I mean, I, I imagine that's what shock looks like. And 
I will say what was so, somewhat similar in, in the tornadoes to now, people leaning on each other. Even though you know people are wandering around, sitting down, crying, shocked, whatever it may be, there are still people coming together in that moment uh, and being a part of a community. I think oftentimes, sometimes we feel disengaged from our community. There's a lot of horrible things going on in our world. But in that moment, I have a shoulder that I can reach out to and I can cry on and I don't even know this guy next to me. That's what I've been seeing in both situations or two neighbors that maybe don't talk to each other are now at the hip talking things through. Uh, that's what I've noticed is just people helping people and relying on people. That's, that's probably the most similar characteristic between the tornadoes uh, and this absolutely horrendous shooting. All right, uh, thank you.